Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Philharmonics by Arcana Games. This is a two to four player game where you're going to be taking place in action selection, having yourself create an orchestra in space. You're going to have your conductor and then you're going to gather your different people with uh, various instrumental talents as you attempt to complete and compose and perform different orchestras or different like melodies. Uh, you're going to be trying to gather patrons as well as fans all while trying to build your repertoire, your amazing composition of music. Music. Uh, you're going to go through five rounds of the game at the end of the fifth round if you have the most prestige on the prestige track You'll win the game. Will you have the most though? Find out as I explain the basic idea of setting up playing and finally my review When you set up the game Philharmonics The first thing you want to do is determine how many players you are playing with in a lower player count You're actually gonna add a dummy player to the board now He won't actually be playing the game, but he will cover up certain spaces to restrict play uh, in this version is a two-player variant in which I've covered up certain double keys on the bottom track here, certain spaces on the board, as well as the fourth player slot and two fan areas. Then for the main game board, each player is going to get a card which represents their alien orchestra and their ship that is going to be traveling around and making their concerts in different various uh, sectors of the galaxy. You're going to be placing your ship on the uh, number on the card and uh, it's going to be on here, I think it's two. Uh, you're also going to take each of these different randomly assigned characters. There's going to be unique musicians as well as the three star level, the star level that dictates the various like uh, performance levels of the musicians and placing them down in their spots. So I'm going to give you actually two bags where you're going to be putting the different types of musicians and pulling them out randomly. And then of course you're going to take the different uh, types of like compositions of music you'll need to perform in each of the different galaxies in each of the different rounds. Uh, secondly, you're going to go ahead and take your player cubes and place them on the first, second, third, or probably even fourth player, depending on how many players you're playing with, track to determine turn order, as well as the round marker on one. Go ahead and roll all the dice and place your uh, composed dice over here uh, after you roll them, and then take your uh, musician dice and roll them and place them over here. Then go ahead and take these little... Uh, musical notes and place them on zero for the prestige, as well as there's two extra tokens that will mark when you get 50 points. On the left hand side are your patrons. You'll be taking out randomly eight patrons and placing them face up on the board here, as well as if you are playing with a two player variant, they have the little markers on the top ends of the top card and the bottom card. Uh, the next thing you'll do is you'll take your little stars here. This indicates the uh, composition level of performance that your musicians have. So if you have no stars on any musicians, you'll have zero stars. And if you have 10, you'll move all the way to 10. This track will dictate uh, how strong your band is and any benefits you might gain. On the right hand side of the game board is going to be where you're going to be placing your different uh, characters, your, your workers, so to speak, as well as the cost of the different actions associated with the major and the minor or basic action that you can take. And there are a total of six of them, which are going to have a random al al allocation or um, allotment of action points to spend, depending on what you are doing in that specific round, because it changes from round to round. On your player board, you're basically going to go ahead and give yourself five experience. You'll give yourself two unique uh, composition pieces, these little the squares here and place them on the top upper left hand side. You'll give yourself a, a marker here indicating zero action points spent and a cube indicating the maximum you can spend. Um, then you're going to have these little uh, guys, these little patron markers that you'll be placing in each of the different eight slots. And finally, you'll have these discs, which you'll be using for when you compose music and if you gain experience from your conductor in any of the five different categories. You have a 3D board as well with uh, four different unique characters. So you're going to start with basically a band, a beginner band with no stars. You'll be placing them on the inner rows of the rungs, as well as leaving an empty area where the purple actors, these special musicians, can be placed if you gather them throughout the game. You'll take two of these track cards here, which are basically end game victory scoring cards, uh, indicating what type of music that they want you to compose and how many of those that you have composed and at what level to score you bonus points. You'll take two and you'll choose one to start the game off with. And then you're going to go ahead and gain $10, 10 money. 
The last thing you'll do is you will take the deck of these tracks, you'll shuffle them, and then you'll deal out number of players plus one face up on the table for the last and final round. When you end your turn, you'll be able to gather one of those. And the last thing is have all your tokens set out and prepared. You have fans, you have your composition numbers, and then you have your currency, as well as, of course, all the musicians that you'll be needing in the supply. And there you go, Philharmonics. Okay, how to play. Philharmonics is a round-based game. On your turn, you'll be taking your musician or your conductor and placing it on one of the areas on the game board. They are represented by circles and letters. Those letters represent the different types of actions, and then the cost of those actions are represented on the right-hand side with these movable tokens. One round might have develop action, cost four, whereas the next round, maybe they've been switched and now, it's th now they're three or two or even one. Each of the different actions will give you that cost, and that cost will represent what the action does. You can take that action or any of the previously cheaper actions on the area to the right of the action you select. We'll go over the basic idea of each of the actions now. Action one is Patron. You are going to place your character on the Patron location. You will then be able to spend currency, which will turn into Patron points, which then you can use to purchase the different Patrons, which have a unique ability that you can use whenever you activate them. The next one is going to be Perform. This is what you do when you have your ship on the board in a given sector to perform one of the required um, tiles here. Each of the tiles represents different types of musical numbers you'll have to have and different types of specific musicians you'll need. And you will score points, you will gain, uh, you'll gain these performance points, uh, you're going to gain money, you're going to move your pieces down on your track. They do a whole bunch of things, but basically you're using this space to perform the location based on where you place your guy. You'll take your cubes to represent that you have uh, one on the space that you have performed at and one on the space in which you have chosen to perform the specific type. And then of course at the end of the round uh, the one that you performed at is going to be removed and you'll get a new one but you'll leave the one on the space. And you can never perform on a space that already has a cube of one of one of the other players. Um, the next thing that you can do is you can compose. To compose, you'll be spending your currency uh, in order to then be able to take the action of spending experience to then gather from these dice here. These dice represent the different types of comp compositions which you will purchase and place on your track. You can never have um, more than one of each type uh, uh, um, in any given column, and you're gonna be placing them from the, in the top row as they kind of go down and improve their lyrical pieces as you get better when you're choosing to perform after composing. But to compose, you'll take the die, take the selection, place it on your board, and then re-roll whatever die that you selected. And of course, the more you spend, the better the action is. Maybe you'll get one or two or even up to three pieces. In this case, it's five, which means you have to spend 10 experience, but you will get three composition pieces. The next one is practice. Practice is going to allow you to upgrade your musicians. They basically start off as zero stars and you can improve them. You can go from zero to one, one to two, and two to three. And there's a certain cost in practice based on um, how high you want to get their levels. Now it's cheaper to go from zero to one and one to two, but on the two to three, it'll cost you a little bit more. The next thing you can do is you can recruit. This is how you recruit musicians to join your band. You'll place it here, you'll pay the cost, you'll check to see how much currency it costs in order to buy a musician. And the musician, musicians here range from one to even two stars. Um, and the different variety of different types of musicians. And the reason why you'll do that is because you'll need certain types in order to compose pieces. And of course, when you fill each of the different locations on your track, you'll score bonus victory points for each of them that you fill before any player. And then after is a still a slight smaller bonus. Then you have develop. Uh, develop is going to basically allow you to increase your experience by paying action points or you can choose to spend action points to give yourself a larger cap of action points that you can use on next rounds as well as round, the round that you're currently in. So maybe it'll cost you four action points. And then of course, with that action of four, you can spend four experience, this little track here, to move up two on your track. That means that you can increase the amount of actions you can take throughout the entirety of the game. Uh, and then the final one is actually a basic action. That is tour. Tour can actually be performed on any of these action spaces. You'll basically place your marker down, you'll pay the current cost and action points, and then you will use it to either move your ship, 
and or gain money. Moving your ship is going to allow you to go from one sector to the next. Uh, whenever you pass from one sector to another, you're going to gain experience. Whenever you pass a location with a fan, you'll gain that fan. Fans are used for a variety of things. You can spend them to gain experience. Um, and well, there's a whole bunch of different things that fans can do. And it's written on your card here. Uh, two fans to deduct one action point cost. Two fans to move one space in the board, but you don't gain any benefits from it. And uh, two fans will let you gain an experience. Um, and you can move to different locations based on where you want to perform. And of course, also, when you want to hire um, or train more uh, talented musicians, you'll need to be in their sector in order to gain them. And each of the different sectors have, will have unique, talented musicians that you can place onto your board that will give you benefits when you perform. Well, speaking of that, how do you even get these, right? Well, each of the different actions will have kind of a bonus that you can take. One of them might be the recruitment, for instance, to pay two to gain a three-star uh, character, which is the one on the left-hand side. Or on the right-hand side, you can spend five money. Um, uh, sorry, it's, it's three for the two-star, which is a special one, and it's five for the three-star character. Um, there's practice where you can spend extra money to increase one of your characters by plus one. Uh, compose, you can spend five money to take an extra one of the compositions and so on and so forth. So each of these actions has a bonus, except for the basic action, which is just gonna give you bonuses when you move from sector to sector and when you land on fan spaces. You'll take a turn simply by doing this. Take your marker or character, place it on one of the spaces, perform the action by spending the action points and anything else it requires you to do and gaining the value. Then you'll pass the turn and the next player will take theirs. If anybody ever places on the same space as another player, they'll have to either pay them money based on the round number or they'll have to spend an extra action point in order to use the space. So it's kind of a cost for journeying to a location that somebody is already currently at. Uh, and you'll go back and forth up until the point where you have no more actions to take. You can no longer spend any more action points because you've run out, um, in which case you can choose to pass. Now there is one way where you can actually increase your action points uh, to go past your marker. So it's like, oh, if I have 10 and I want to spend 11, I can do that, but it's going to cost me prestige, which is the victory points at the end of the game, in order to do that. So I spend my character, place it, do all the things, pass. Then you do all the things and pass. And we go back and forth up until the point where we both choose to no longer do the round. They don't, we can't do it anymore. In which case, we'll reset the board. We'll take these markers off um, and place them based on the player who most recently passed to the person who last passed to gain a benefit on this track here, which is also going to dictate the um, turn order. Um, any of the patrons will get replaced if they have been taken. Or um, uh, any of the markers on the board here on the uh, rectangular tiles will be removed and we'll add a new one down. Um, and we'll move the round marker up and take any of our pieces off of the board. And finally, we'll change the action costs. Each of them are going to be switched around so that maybe one is going to be worth a different cost than it was previously, thusly dictating what rounds are going to be worth um, more based on the actions and placement. And you'll go through that five times. And at the end of the fifth round, you'll just take an extra bonus one of these cards here, and then you'll get to check to see how well you did. Uh, you'll score points based on a variety of measures, whether it be money, as well as the discs and your compositions over here, and your previously earned value. And whoever has the most is the winner in the game, Phil Harmonics. That's the basic idea of the game. I didn't cover exactly everything, but I covered a pretty good amount of it. Um, and there is quite a bit more to experience, but we'll talk about a lot of that in my review. Phil Harmonics is a Euro worker placement game, and you're just going to be taking a worker, placing it, taking that action, and then choosing to do the bonus if there is one, and passing, going back and forth up until you no longer have actions or no longer wish to use your actions, in which case the next round will trigger. You'll do all the end of round cleanup and start the beginning of the round and continue to the fifth round. Whoever has the most points is the winner. It's quite simple. Um, there's a lot to this game, like a lot of Euros. Kind of reminds me of some board and dice type games where there's just a very simple amount of choice that you have, but each of them has complexities to them and unique little things and intrinsicities that you can 
can do. And based on the round, it will determine what actions cost what. Sometimes it's going to be very expensive to perform. And performing is very good because it gives you a lot of victory points. Just like gathering the musicians and filling up your board can give you a lot of victory points as well. But you have to choose to use them on the best possible rounds so that you do not waste your actions where you could be better spent maybe gathering patrons or improving your band size or perhaps improving the quality of your band or moving your ship around to the different sectors to compose different pieces or symphonies based on what they want. The more accurate you get with your compositions and being able to perform, the more victory points you will gain, and you kind of have to coordinate that from round to round, and you're never going to know what's the best actions up until the point where you see what new actions are and what they are going to cost. Uh, because each of these actions uh, have a lot of variety uh, based on how much they cost. Obviously, the more action points you spend, the likely better the action will be for you. Still being able to choose a lesser one might help, but it will still cost you that higher amount. Um, I love the idea that the game is very straightforward. Do I want to improve myself for later? Do I want to recruit guys? Do I want to make them better? Do I want to choose the music I need for the different types of symphonies I'm going to be creating? Do I want to perform those symphonies based on my location? And do I want to gather patrons that will give me benefits throughout the game? That's pretty much what you are doing in this game. And of course, because there's so much variety and so much change that can happen from round to round, therein lies the rug. That is where the uniqueness of the game starts to represent itself. Uh, this game has a cool mechanic where you're kind of moving your ship around from different location to location, trying to find the best spots to be able to compose. You can only compose each piece once in a given round and then they get removed. So if you both are gunning for one, you have to kind of set up the best action management to where you can get enough points, but also to make sure that they don't steal it from under you because that can happen in the game. There's a, a light amount of player interaction, but it really, really makes a difference. It really counts. And if you do not use that interaction, to your best ability, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, there also is some interaction as to where you place your specific piece on the locations as for types of, uh, types of uh, currency that you can gain based on the round from players choosing your space. Um, players might even kind of actively choose to avoid your space because an extra action point and, and or extra money, especially if the round is later, can be detrimental. Ten bucks is worth a victory point in this game, and that can make the difference. The game probably, I'd say, is a medium range point game in which you're likely to get anywhere between like 50 to 70 points would probably be my guess as to the range. Um, I love this game. It's, it's really, really cool. But uh, I'm really hoping the rules get kind of fleshed out. Uh, understanding each of the different actions, because there's so much going into it, I just want to see it like cleaned up straightforward minus that like once you get into it understand it because it's 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 kind of heavy on understanding the conception maybe it maybe it was just me i don't know but understanding each of the different pieces and how they kind of function with each other and while it's very simple once you've kind of gathered it the learning process is pretty heavy i would say this is kind of board and dice type level like difficulty in learning the rules to the game but in practice it's a very straightforward type of a game that just gives you a lot of choice which is really really nice the game is only five rounds, but it can play out quite a bit longer um, than you might imagine because you're spending the, your action points and you can choose to spend as little or as much as you want. So you might have really quick games, you might have really slow games. It just really depends on where they're placed and what people want at a given time. You might have one round where players almost do nothing. There's not enough of the actions that they want to do for a cheap enough cost to the way ha where they have to kind of just move on to the next round, whereas maybe somebody benefits greatly and everybody else kind of flounders. Learning this game too, if you go into it playing with people who have played before, uh, you're definitely going to be on the lower end of likelihood of winning because uh, understanding conceptually when and where is the best type of actions to take and at what cost to you is going to make a heck of a lot of difference. You might think performing or uh, gathering a musician might be the best action to take, but it might not always be the case. Even though in practice, if all of them were the same value, it probably would be in your best interest to try and compose as much as possible. But when you've got to compose that's gonna, or perform, that's gonna cost you six action points, that might not be the best round to do it. 
but maybe somebody snags the one location you wanted and then you're gonna lose those victory points. So there's a bit of like a teeter-totter effect to the game. But yeah, I wish, if the rules could be just condensed down just enough to make it a little bit easier on my comprehension, it would be great because for the first hour I was struggling. But after kind of getting it and the flow of the game, on rounds three and four and even especially five, I had it nailed. I knew what I was doing, what I was trying to gather and the points that I needed to receive. Quality of the game. This is a prototype. Prototypes are going to be subject to change. Rules are subject to change. If you're watching this video and you go, oh, that's not the rules anymore. Well, that's probably because it was probably changed or maybe I got something wrong. That's also possible. In fact, that's also very probable. But uh, this is a really, really beautiful looking game. The pieces are thick. I love the tokens. I love the fact that uh, the different characters represent the different types of music. I love the theme attached to the game as well. Like you are performing in space and utilizing aliens and moving from sector to sector to kind of show off your traveling uh, orchestra on the spaceship and it just really really worked for me it was a lot of fun i haven't seen a lot of like cool musically inclined games and this kind of does that for me uh the 3d board aspect of placing your musicians in the different slots is really fun as well and i like the fact that i'm gathering band members but not just all the best ones i want a variety of different ones based on where i go as to what they want to hear and also different types of composing music and maybe i want to improve my conductor because maybe i want to try and make this really amazing album uh, they might score me some more points in the game, but also not always. Sometimes I just want to produce a bunch of like low budget kind of stuff to get as much like fan service and generation as possible. And so there's like theming inside of the theme for this game. But basically overall art, quality, and theme really tie in very, very nicely to this game. The action selection process is wonky and weird like i wasn't sure what i was like doing and how like i didn't know like what the best action was at the beginning of the game like normally with heroes i'm like oh i know the best action it's this or i want to try and get another way to get another worker out that's typically what you want to do right with with your with worker your placement hero and worker placement type games you want to have as many workers as possible gain as many actions gain as much value and this one it was like unique in which I hadn't really expected. I was sitting there going, ah, okay, it's my turn. I know all the rules, but what do I do, you know? And I think that might throw some people off, but it might also be something that's gonna be really interesting for players to kind of want to bite their teeth into. And once you get it, you get it. But up until then, that's where the uniqueness of the game comes into play as to like, okay, I think I want to get more guys. I want to improve upon them. And then I want to go ahead and move to locations and try and perform because it's typically generally what you want to do, but the action costs change that and make it so unique. I mean, I, I, half of me is like, I didn't like the fact that it cost me six points to do this one action, but the other half of me was like, it's actually really cool because now it pushes me away from just kind of uh, cookie cuttering my gameplay every single time. The board dictates what you can do, and if you want to do what you want to do, there could be a great cost to it, which is really cool, actually. I really, really enjoyed that. Overall, Philharmonics is a beautifully done game with an excellent theme tied into really, really nice components. Uh, it's, it's very enjoyable in the fact that it changes on its own and based on how players play makes a difference. Uh, but overall, it's simple and easy to understand once you've got down the grasp of each of the actions and how they kind of change. I didn't explain each of the different upgraded actions and what you have to spend exactly because there is a lot there. But I figure giving you just a basic example of all that kind of stuff can kind of give you an idea of how it all played out. And it's going to make, make it a lot easier for you while you go through the rules and learn the game yourself. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Philharmonics by Arcana Games. If you're interested in taking a look, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. As well as, of course, our website unfilteredgamer.com where we have blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. You can also go ahead and check out our live streams, which are every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, and we try and do streams on Wednesday on Whatnot at 6.30 p.m. PST as well, where we show off games, play games, and sell games. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I greatly appreciate if you subscribed, and I look forward to competing in the Philharmonics with you next time.